Well, um, good uh, morning as we're sitting here at Altiri on this beautiful morning. It is indeed um, a um, May 31st, the last day of May. That's uh, unbelievable, incredible. The time goes by so fast. And we're sitting here with the uh, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello Hello show that's been on the air since 1980. And of course, not to fail to mention the contribution by Fraser Dougherty, Francis Ann, and of course, a huge followers and contributor. Uh, contributors that, that that took that journey from um, you know a, a little bit over four decades ago here at the east end of Long Island to think about it and mainly to think about the fact that I'm kind of been uh, together with this outfit for about 37 38 years or something like that yeah uh, is is humbling and fulfilling and also um, um, enlightening and encouraging and uh, and and, and so much of that kind of uh, path of uh, inner growth and uh, um, self, uh, uh, what's the word I want to say, realization, uh, uh, daily conclusions that are coming to the forefront and um, are not left uh, untouched and, and unattended to. And we're doing a great job here at the uh, facilities of LTV and the public the concept of public access here thrives in a very healthy and promising and says steady as she goes way and uh, and all of this is happening as a second nature and that's a good thing so of course uh, we want to be able to well personally if i was to talk about myself i want to I always find myself in a in at, at, at the edge of that which is not necessarily intimidating me, but I, this is giving me the options to uh, thrive within the basic attempts that mostly contributing by the nature of their nature to be available and visible and uh, uh, accessible. Uh, and the fact that people can take a look at it of that which you do and responsible for for its creation so to speak and then make something uh, formidable something meaningful something um, 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 that has an impact and because you're the same person that if you you know, obviously you're the same person i think you are you will be immediately uh aware of what's the best thing to do, what's the best course of action, so to speak, you know. And the best course of action now would be to take a little bite of this wonderful butterish cookie. <laughs> it's still kind of morning. I mean, And it does um, reflect a tremendous amount of uh, projections. It gives best, it give birth to so many projections because the nature of second guessing is uh, picks up a different meaning. In this uh, type of journey. To be with public access really helps. It helps if if if, if at all with, with the fact that there's certain things that you want, we don't need to worry about. Once you sit here and you're there and it's running and it's working and it's recording and you're out there. And when it's live and then when it's a rerun, when it's whatever and people watching, people this, I watch you, you watch me, I watch you watching me, watch me watch you. Perfect, wonderful, smooth, nothing sophisticated because it thrives on the concept of sophistication as a given. Every time I go to my studio, I feel like I'm entering a sophisticated zone, a sophisticated space, because it just felt like the story is it's like an ongoing, an ongoing story, whether mine or others. I mean, you, I believe my studio, the story inside the studio does not cease from uh, being expressed aloud and in many other ways, just by way of energy. 
uh, looping and cir circling, and but it doesn't go away. It doesn't just like go on silent or go to sleep, and then when you enter it again, it comes to life. So, uh, um, operating from within, operation itself. I don't know. I, I'd like to be a little cliche here, but it tells. It picks up. You know, it, it packs a meaning, and that meaning is uh, has uh, good intentions and obviously it has a life of its own so uh, again public access in my life at least gives me that kind of reassuring feeling that uh, um, well we kind of got you covered uh, we kind of um, are able to say that you can sit back and enjoy even though it's you know you need to uh, deliver a one hour monologue or, or a couple of hours of interviews and gather your thoughts and and, and curate some shows uh, and welcome some artists and and talk about pretty much the same thing over and over again thousands and thousands of of programs and shows and interviews and it's thousands and thousands now I always thought that uh, uh, that I, I comforted myself, uh, feeling that I, and no matter what it is that's going to happen, what it is that I'm, I am and will become, uh, it won't be worse than <laughs> Frasier Doherty. <laughs> it it won't be worse than the founder here that was like completely uh, uh, able to be in more than one place at the same time, and not only physically but ideology. Ideologi ideologically and and just he always wanted something whatever it is that he's dealing and willing and willing and dealing with so that it will be meaningful it will be always leaving your room that if you want to plunge you plunge into the depth and that depth will leave you will not keep you unbusy when it comes to kind of uh, feeling the heat and saying, okay, well, I need to really focus here, you know, it sounds fun, it feels fun, it looks like fun, but it also feels like I need to know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about this particular moment right now, I'm talking about the world, the state of readiness of the world to be a partner to a conversation, interaction, whatever you want to call it, one-on-one, -on -one, group, on, you know, and many on many, you know, but but it is just like that kind of attitude of an entity on an entity, in front of an entity, alongside, compatible. Any which way is welcome because any which way uh, is initiated and instigated and suggested and pointed out and con being considered and, uh, and and it's a wonderful feeling. Now it's a wonderful feeling also to know that this world is fortunate to have stu studios activated re re real uh, artists struggle they, whether they they can make it or they cannot make it but this feeling of their mustness to be a part of this creative process does not uh, uh, dissipate into the thin air it doesn't just disappear you know it's it's, it's you you're getting a warning you're getting a you know it, the forces that are involved in this kind of in every kind of scenario in your life are considerate and fair and honest. They will tell you, listen, it's about to collapse <laughs> or it's about to uh, flourish meteorically. I mean, you get a, a, you get a warning for any which way scenario that is different than the one that's actually taking place on the surface. That is to say that, you know, you will be uh, notified about uh, the forces of goodness coming and what it would mean as far as change is concerned uh, and as far as your life is concerned and most of which you'll be very delighted to to hear and to <laughs> and to understand the nature of this change and to welcome it and to actually um, accept it with joy and gratitude so if you wanted to write that poem, you know, and then you realize that actually you, 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 like, you start the poem, you talk about that, the, 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 
the visual that you had a hard time describing, and we all like uh, uh, can't wait anymore because we can, you, 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 you took us to the extreme, and now we're gonna just standing still and knowing that it's coming and knowing that it's coming shortly and and maybe not knowing anything about it altogether. But this feeling of being sure of yourself and not being sure of yourself at all is an ongoing one. So it doesn't matter what kind of a feeling it is, but the fact that it's been implemented and manifested on the surface flawlessly, fluently, velvetish, um, loop after loop, uh, 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 decently, uh, uh, considerately, uh, uh, just just uh, just a joy to see that the machine itself does not have to show more extreme capabilities than the actual parts that makes this machine as as one whole entity. And we know, we know what questions to ask, and you know, we, we kind of, we, can, we know enough about what we should expect by way of getting answers to our questions. And um, uh, those forces, they're going to make their uh, presence known. I love it. Love this sentence. They make their presence known. I love it. I love it. So, so there's no, there's no problem. I, I don't want to use the word problem. There's no issue here, because it, 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 then it goes back to that, going back to square one, going back to basics. Because you wanna, you wanna thrive. You don't wanna give up. You don't wanna quit. You don't. But it's not like you don't wanna quit because, you know, that you can do it, and you better not. And even if you will, then you're gonna get up. And then, it's not coming from that kind of meaningful talk that becomes cheap quickly enough and then it's like you're saying wait a second but nobody's nobody is informing me that no matter what at the end of the day no matter what decisions take, are taking place you're gonna have to toil and slave and work hard no matter what it is whichever direction that you're gonna choose not gonna change the nature of your task and the magnitude of your of the demands of that situation it can be simple, straightforward, but man, oh man, in the um, in, in the engine room, uh, there's, there's just like a lot of people there, and there's a lot of people that are concerned about things that are ongoing and concerned about potential things that are might happen, and and uh, concerned about things that know that, that, that will, will most definitely happen, just don't know when. A lot of honesty is being spread all over that engine room where it's it's working for us uh, tirelessly, tirelessly, and 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 we know it and we feel it because we feel it and therefore we know it, and and therefore we feel it in a different way and more in a more kind of responsible, meticulous way, and therefore we you know uh, accept it as a part of uh, of that which we should. Uh, uh, practice to um you know extend regards extend acknowledgement so the other, the other day i can't say the other day because it's only two hours ago i was in my studio let's say and it's just like i have to spend time there with hours yes you know what if there was a world that would have allowed me to spend all day in the studio that's a world that i don't want there's just way too many things to do outside, all over the world, all over the neighborhood, all over the, you know? I, it's just like, what, what What? did I learn yesterday? I learned yesterday that if you know how much money you need in order to, in order to survive, because you made the math, you did the math, and then, it's, and, then you, and then you know that you need 40 hours a week in order to achieve that. And then when you, but and then, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is it is it is it, is it you want to make it happen? Whether you feed yourself or your family, it doesn't matter. You got, to, you made them, you have the math, you have the numbers, and it will take you forty hours. Now, then he said something awesome. I thought and crazy almost that you you do, by by doing everything right, like you're doing it yourself, you're doing it all alone, you 
thinking about it, you're coming up with all these ideas that will allow you and make you this and busy enough to work and to earn the income and to be able to pay you the payments that you need to pay. And you don't leave any room for God to perform his miracles because you're not in need, you know what I mean? So, so they said immediately, work 30 hours. That will solve this issue because if you work 30 hours, you'll be short. And if you'll be short, you'll need miracles. And if you need miracles, then that's where God comes in. He performs the miracles because he wants to show you that he's real. It's simple, you know? No, okay. For me, it's simple because as it should be so, every time I utter the word God, that something else comes to mind. Because it's responsible for all and everything and uh, and the... Uh, the, the master orchestrator and, and and the heart of that engine that has a spirit and a soul that knows everything because it made everything, it created everything. It it, it, it it allowed this composition of logic and common sense of what it's all about to take place, whether it's uh, evident and clear and available or whether it's just uh, hidden and concealed and you have to use your whatever certain kind of brains to penetrate through. Successful or not doesn't matter. Regardless, nobody's watching you. Nobody's watching you to see how well you're doing in the tests. They're watching you to see whether you're taking the tests or not. That's what's crucial. So they know you're taking the tests. Yeah, they'll be they'll be a little you know curious to see what what was your grade. But sometimes, most or more often than not, they'll choose not to see whether you have an A plus or or B minus. No, really, really, really. The triumph is in the fact that you come in and you showed up and you did it and whatever. Did it poorly, still did it nevertheless. Did it greatly, still did it nevertheless. So I wanted to say that when I wanted to complete my task and I wanted to show the world that I can expose myself in terms of sharing with the world my weaknesses, my concerns, my exposure, my vulnerability, my tenderness, my soft spots, my trauma, my tragedies, my my triumphs, my uh, and, and so I can do that while I can uh, uh, trying to tell you a story that I want, don't want to tell you the story independently and out of context. I want to tell you the story vis-a-vis -vis the pain and the laughter and the ups and the downs and the different colors that are actually a part, the, the parts that make this story whole so so and then and then i would take also under consideration that down the road when i'm going to have to show up no matter how much concern i would put in place hope with the hope that people with the hope that those that whom whom you address will do most of the work for you in terms of making sense of it all so if you go going to your dentist and you know the dentist well for years and, and the dentist know things about you, you know, but not that you're sick or anything, but you know, you know, maybe you have that kind of anxiety attacks or uh, um, things of this nature. Uh, so, so you can, you can suddenly tell your dentist, listen, you know, if in the middle of the treatment or something, I feel confined and I feel like I'm going to burst, I will just raise my hand and and you will know, you will know that you need to open the doors and, and the window and pause for about a minute or two and we'll be just fine. And it did happen. And the dentist, like a soldier, reacted so kindly, so so efficiently, so full of passion and concern and and that will to take the extra time and uh, but but not ignoring reality, not but imagining that life is not what it really is, you know, by length, by depth, by you know, intensity, by colors, by compositions. So I will be the one that will be marked by you eventually, because whatever, because you know, I can give explanations, 
marked about what, because of what, due to what, and, and so much, so forth, and, and so on. But I accept it at face value because you need to vent, and it's important for you to vent because you're the one who's going to cut the flesh and give orders and make sure that all the numbers are right and open your flesh and look at the problem and cut it and clean it and shave it and suck it and whatever and then sew it and then communicate with the rest, make sure the numbers are right and say, we're good to go, Let's, it's a wrap, you know? And then you wake up and then you love everyone, you feel better, you you think he's he's a magician, you think he's a... He's a friend for life, and you're dead and everything. But not before he had to mark you, and to put you down, and to belittle you, and to bring you to size that you don't deserve, all in one act. Like, not in a million years that this individual will be aware that he or she are doing it, did it. And probably will do it in the future. So much pain. So much pain comes with that uh, with that uh, point of impact. And I wouldn't even call it point of impact. Sometimes it's just a little rub, a little scratch, you know. A little uh, 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 intimidating uh, poke, you know. And, uh, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> but... What options do we have, do I have, and you, the likes of you that are like me, have? We can either say, screw it, I'm out of here. And you know what? And that's just, I think it's going to be just fine. Maybe it won't be fine at all. When I'm saying, I think it's going to be fine. You walk out, you walk away, because you cannot tolerate certain things that people do and you're not really in the mood to try and find out because the process of trying to find out is not less hurtful and painful as as, as, as the pain under discussion is concerned. It's a, a freaky situation. So, and, and, or you can say, I don't even think I noticed it. I, I don't think, I don't think it ever happened. And you can actually, by doing so well, maybe hurt yourself because you're going to have to suppress. You're going to have to, to, to uh, uh, compress because this is something that by nature of the nature of your nature wants to go out and you know all too well they need to go out. It's not life or, or death matters. It's just like, you know, you know, you know. <clears throat> you know, when you need to go pee, you go pee. You don't, like, argue and stay there. Okay, let me see how long I'm going to hold it. You pee. And even if you don't have a toilet or whatever, you go to a corner, you pee. <clears throat> so, you will puzzle the evil intentions of the good people and your, your guarding angels that operated on you and cleaned that malignant growth of some sort that threatened your life and brought you back to life and reintroduced you to society and give you a nice little push and a hug and say, we love you, go, don't come back. But to leave you with your with the impact of the uh, uh, drama that, that, that penetrated the surface just enough to... And make sure that it's going to be digging in lifelong process, journey, progress, process and that will take place just because that initial point of impact was strong enough to fracture the first layer somewhat. That's it. But still, nevertheless, you think, you, you choose to believe that this is actually preferable on saying, you know what, I think I'm out of here. <clears throat> to you, it more, makes more sense to say, I don't even know what you're talking about. What just happened? Did it happen? I don't think so. Too busy. Maybe next time. 
and you go about your merry way. <clears throat> and then you will pleasantly surprise those good people with evil intentions that you're actually, they know you're smart enough. You're too smart uh, to, to claim that you haven't noticed anything, of course. <clears throat> so they take it as a sign of, uh, well, maybe we need to take a second look. Maybe that first look wasn't enough in order to value, evaluate, and figure out who this person in front of us is. What does he or she stand for? And that's exactly what's happening. That's taking place. They will. And they will find out that actually much better for them to have you as a friend than anything else. And yeah, I, I guess you can spell that as this is this is your, your lucky day. This is your lucky, lucky something. Yes, this is it. So, yeah. Um, so, your poetic, artistic destiny is uh, embedding within it, is being embedded by all those wonderful things that you preached about and and declare it to the world uh, every opportunity you had uh, is actually can be put to the test. And that you can take this tra trauma, take this tragedy supposedly, take this harsh moment and say, thank you God, you know, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for this material. Not because I doubt myself and my ability to bring to life a subject matter that will support most of these things instantly. But then we, I already had my discussions with myself that what, it, what, is, what is it that I won't be finding myself engaged in? What is it that I would prefer to come, to come slower towards and, and to take back roads and to take my time or not altogether deal with it, have anything to do with it by choice, you know? So you, you want to be already in the contemplation of figuring out quickly enough what it is that you're going to do with all this mess, supposedly. How, how valuable it is, it, 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 is it? It is. How, you know, how, suddenly you're busy with numbers. You're saying, this is good stuff, man. This will last for a long time. And rightfully so. And you deserve it. And you know that what the people tell you, not tell you. Probably people will tell you. I have a lot of people that when they, they see me, every time they see me, they try to describe me the very same way that they do. And I love it because what they say all the time about me, in front of me, to me, is really very pleasant to hear. Forget about ego, narcissism, complication of the soul psychologically, philosophically, and psychiatrically, whatever. It's really Someone is saying something good about you. It's consistent for years. He will say, I don't know how you do it. I've been to your shows, to this, to that. I listened to the music you were playing. The other day when you were reading your poetry, I'm left with things. I'm left with things that he says. He says to you, the artist. And to back it up, he's not, he's not that he's even trying. He's just giving you samples and examples. And then you say, God. He's reciting my poetry. Maybe I should learn from him how to take my poetry as seriously as he's taking my poetry with that attitude to learn, to learn. What's his, his access to this attitude and why is it so easy for him? I can, if it's easy for him because he, he's got a technique of some sort, it's something that I can implement also. So maybe I should pay more attention. Maybe I should also just uh, take upon myself to ask for help. You go to the source and you say, forgive me ahead of time for everything, but I need some of that. I need you to spare some for me. And 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 uh, and and, uh, and and if I don't live up to whatever it is that the, your expectations are all about, which I think I know, then don't ever give me again anything. <clears throat> and then it happens and it happens fast and then it's just back and forth, back and forth. 
and suddenly this reality in front of you is impressed and showing a face more and more of a real partner. Wouldn't you love to have a real partner in your life that you cannot see and you cannot... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like a thing that is somewhere. It's nowhere to be found. It's a feeling. But the, the feeling has, has, has a characteristics as if it, it, it has density, you know, like a body, like, like, like a machine, like a, like a vessel, like a vehicle. Um, but don't you want to have a friend that is silent? Kind of like silent, not because it's replacing another good friend that happens to be the opposite of silent. It's just silent because this is the style of this particular one, and then you 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 you, you experiment while all these wonderful people in front of you experiment and are experimenting as we speak. You experiment apropos their experimentations and experiments, just like that. So, at the end of the day, you will ask yourself, so, okay, fine, all good and dandy and beautiful and great. So, so where are we going from here? Why am I doing this? What is it going to stand for? What is going to good, for what, what, what kind of a use? What kind of a thing that wasn't here a minute ago that's going to suddenly show its face a minute from now? And that we will be responsible for it. We will I mean, keep on being, always where. <clears throat> and even if the difficulty strikes, then you just kind of go by meaning. You mean for it to be good. And you continue to do your hard work with this end, never-ending loop, so to speak. And that's a support system. People would not mess with you because they wouldn't have the code or the act. No access. You see, you don't want to, you don't want to initiate confrontation in order to make a point to the other side that maybe you're strong enough, maybe you're sophisticated, maybe I'm stronger than the, you're stronger than they think or whatever, and then maybe give them a taste of it and then they will leave you alone. Here you realize <clears throat> that this <clears throat> potential is being reduced to almost zero. This probability is suddenly nowhere to be found. Almost like erased from the from the lists. Because you're getting better and better. And because you set the record so straight by documentation, by deposits of um, accomplishments, building, building that, that which will be recollected in the minds of people every time they see you. I have someone that... Again, and you don't have to be no Picasso and no grandmaster of chess to, to be considered as someone worthwhile listening to or, or observing his art or seeking his, his um, a company. And, but some <clears throat> people will tell me, <clears throat> I, have a sail, I have a sailboat in my mind. Um, that sail to distances that belong to my forefathers. And then I say, he is just reciting now something I read 15 years ago in a poetry reading that I had the chance to read one poem and I was one amongst about three dozen po poets. But he remembers that. And, and he goes, huh? Hmm? <laughs> so this is what this is this is how I feel. I feel like this person is telling me, I love you very much. I feel very, very good every time I see you and standing next to you. Good vibrations, good energy. You mean well. You inspire. I know a thing or two about you. This just gives me the feeling that uh, you really, with the same kind of level of honesty, approaching 
that kind of evolutionary process that that is in, is 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 associated with the, with arts with creativity and the uh, nonchalant from beginning to end how pleasant of a feeling is it and how can i be left uh complacent will i ever in the face of of being amazed and and so of, of course i would find myself wanting to tell you i love you i respect you i support you i look up to you and i'm sure that you yourself think some good things about me but of course i do but of course i do this this person that i was telling you when i'm telling you this guy is like he doesn't know the extent of that inspiration that i get from him i don't even going to get into it i tell you it's a fact and then one day i was trying to make him aware of my feelings and how actually my feelings are a compliment towards him towards how i observe him and that he's not aware of it and that i wanted him to be aware of it indirectly without me telling him let me tell you something about yourself he's figuring it out because i said it enough times and i will continue to say it until forever and it's making more and more sense because to begin with it was something that made sense all along how do you like that all along since the beginning since that ancient point of impact <laughs> so you're belittled by it then you feel exuberant then you're kind of humbled by it then you feel uplifted because because that's the way it is the ongoing feeling slash reality is familiar to you because it comes from you it has been portrayed in in front of you across from you by a different entity so what do you what do you figure well i know enough about myself to know a lot about a lot so therefore uh, then i should know a lot about this crowd this people these people because because it's, it's just a replica of who i am so easy i will no go wrong with them i will not hurt their feelings i will not uh, be unnecessarily challenging i will be considerate i will be helpful i will be social i will be a friend always will extend a hand because i know that i'm approaching myself the closer i get to them the closer i get to myself and and and, and of course it's just like when you wake up in the morning and say like kind of good morning to yourself and then in the next five minutes until you go to the bathroom wash your face whatever brush your teeth this that you know you're on the sofa you welcome in the morning welcome in life now it's all clear about who you are to you so this is the same clarity that you're going to practice and know without practicing without knowing because you already practiced enough and you know all the rest that you need to know about the world would look to you so clearly for the for how great it really is there's, there's no less or more it's just the way it is and and there's no lying to yourself like you wouldn't start thinking about something about yourself you yourself and you start lying to yourself yeah, deceiving yourself uh, 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 taking yourself for a ride or something you know it doesn't you know so the same the world it becomes very tolerable because it's uh um because it can tolerate so much and not not because it's so frustrated that it's just gave up it's because it, you know it is after all a game to a certain degree a certain extent that the engagement with life with with all the aspects of being a human being on planet earth and from so many directions yeah but it doesn't mean that it has to derail you and leave you completely uh, exposed uh, useless and uh, and out of commission which could happen uh, very much so very easily very quickly but lucky for us that we know better and we know better with another 
we we share we share the we share equally and evenly with the other with the other part that makes us feel more airtight and condensed because it's sometimes so needed to to maintain that level of coherence without the need to establish coherence every time it goes up and down it maintains that level of, level, level of decency so it holds tight but it's very relaxed because it's floating it's you know it's just you know picking uplifted by by the journey itself you know the journey itself sometimes becomes becomes the the flying device and unlimited mileage go embark and that's exactly what we're doing it's not important who is aware of it and who is not it's nice to be able to be aware of it maybe you will gain a little more by be, being more aware about what's going on what is the really the meaning of it what's the importance of it but still even if you don't know anything if you just no don't even know its existence it will benefit you because it's mostly about the things that are the subconscious under that level of consciousness that uh, hiding in a very sophisticated fashion and trying to avoid the Um, contact at least the unnecessary kind and then you preserve that energy because you choose your battles you know you have the battles that you're gonna know that you would need more energy and more troops and more supplies in order to uh, prevail and uh, and on top of it you you dream like any other dreamer you know any other dreamer And you make those sounds that uh, wants to tell you uh, well okay maybe this is a better story than I thought it was because you know drawing is 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 kind of storytelling because I remember when I took med lessons with Kenwood the nod in 1984 in Spanish Harlem those were the best seven months of my life I used to go once a week travel to Spanish Harlem hundred and first and first hundred and hundred and second and first the uh, the uh, southwest corner of one hundred and second and first avenue southwest corner was his studio and then it was actually on hundred and second uh, maybe a hundred feet into hundred and second from the southwest corner and I was a little scared you know nineteen eighty four was rough rough the city was a rough place believe it or not if you think today is rough you don't know what the early 80s in Manhattan were like and I told him hey something it was late and I'm standing there like a sitting duck waiting for someone to come and stab me or something anyway but I'm exaggerating but I, so he said listen I I just want to make you aware that if you stand in front of my door everybody will know you're waiting for me nobody's No one's going to hurt you. Okay. I was taken by him so much that it didn't, it didn't matter. I didn't even hear what he had to say. I was more interested in what is this master is going to choose to share with me today. Who am I? I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. Sitting across from a world-renowned revolutionary. Plays his keyboards with drum sets and all that in ways that you cannot imagine. This guy like... deaf a hundred percent deaf in one ear and fifty percent deaf in the other and he forget about it so it took me to those heights and levels of intimidation that almost tore me apart to a point where I had to lie to him I, every time he asked me did you get it did you understand I said yes of course and then I, but then I was just too afraid to say no and I was having too much fun because I was inhaling his strengths. I was inhaling his strength there was second to none something that you will it, it just this is one period in your life that will never repeat itself just like the day that I played with the, a grandmaster a chess grandmaster by chance I don't even want to talk about how that happened but I remember 
He was so kind. And I was like, in, in the highest level of ridiculousness that I found myself with a grandmaster. So he wasn't really playing with me, but he was kind of toiling with the things, trying to show me how, what is the meaning of the delicacy behind the art of movement. What does it mean to be confident because you know so much, because your knowledge is so firm, not only so extensive, but firm? non swaying non chain that means what you know and establish as a fact remains there forever and that's a source of strength that you tomorrow is going to be like today with the addition of what today contributed to tomorrow so you only have to remember is what you contributed because what you know is what you know it's never going away with chess it's like this yeah well you always have to play of course to practice like anything else but to keep that level of familiarity so when this force is coming at you vicious this is what Tai Chi is all about it's beautiful and holier than thou but vicious you get in the way of that grandmaster of Tai Chi you are dead meat you stand with no chance to survive an encounter with a Tai Chi master just like when you come across a grandmaster or a master of chess, you don't even exist, not even up as a particle compared to his ability to, he will devour you instantly, constantly. There will never be room for you to prevail unless what you consider, consider prevailing will be increasing knowledge and saying, he is cool with me, now it's my turn to be cool with him. Now it's my turn to tell him that I have my own powers and these powers there, mainly because it's due to things that I invented myself, that I put together myself, something out of nothing. Yes, yes, you're capable. Just like we impressed uh, Zavinul, Joe Zavinul from, from, uh, from, from uh, the weather, weather report and was our mentor. These are not stories, this is real life. He was our mentor. We played freestyle music and all this, and all it took for him is one of his visits to Israel, that we got him to uh, visit our studio, and and in, in the middle of and, and then we, we we put some music that we recorded that afternoon, I think, or something, and he stopped, he stopped, and he said, "Wait, hold on, quiet in the room," because he wanted, he wanted to listen to something that was different than what he, from what he's used to listen. With the people showing, showing them the recordings of what they play in here and there, this one was just the way it was. He wanted to know about a high level of comfort within awkwardness. High level of comfort within awkwardness. High level of comfort within awkwardness. High level of comfort. Within with awkwardness. Um, high level of comfort with awkwardness, that's what I want to write. Um, um, high level of comfort within or wordness uh, this is comfort f o r t high level of comfort Okay, very good.
Okay, very good. So, high level of comfort within awkwardness. He wants to know about that because that's not, that spells something not familiar, therefore, digging itself deep in the future while we are so present in the here and now. You know, only a master like this can instantly track it and realize it, figure it out, stop everyone and benefit from it and love you and appreciate you and respect you for life. He can only judge you but what he heard that moment and what he heard later on when it was more available, like, okay, now, yes. He would not say things against what his mind told him. That is, he would not say opposite to that, anything. Because his mind told him while the heart was rejoicing and, and enjoying and and feeling completely exuberant in that, and appreciate, and appreciative, and and respectful. So all this, yeah, well, these are big words and all this, but on the surface, it, they last for, for fractions of seconds, and they leave behind nothing but the source that is uh, sounds feels. Uh, Promising. That's a good word. I need my yeah. Just wanted to mention. Yeah. Just wanted to mention that we're sitting here. The last day of May. Friday morning, May 31st, year 2024, here with the Hello Hello Show. And my name is Chaim Mizrahi. Continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello Hello Show that's been on the air since 1980. Uh, of course, we're coming up with this wonderful art group art exhibition again. Um, the opening will be next Saturday, uh, June 8th, from 4 to 7. It's called um, Growth Phase. Is it? I think so. <laughs> and I wanted to finish with, the, with this... Uh, um, with this just a little gift that I want to leave you with that's to say goodbye for the weekend the room buzzed with a high level of comfort within awkwardness as if the very air twisted with discomfort bodies shifted uneasily glances darted and then quickly averted a silence, thick and palpable, settled over the gathering, broken only by the occasional nervous cough of a shuffling of feet, or, or the shuffling of feet. Conversations, strained and stilled, struggled to find their footing. Each word hesitant stepped on treacherous ground. It was a dance of unease. A ballet of tension where every participant was uh, acutely aware of the fragile veneer of civility that threatened the crack under the weight of the unspoken. <laughs> <laughs> and that, well, do we have time? Let me see. Yeah, maybe we have a few more minutes because there's another way of doing it. Ah, uh, unspoken of the weight under the crack that threatens civility, a surface fragile, that of which awareness accurately was participating everywhere. Tension of smooth dancing, discomfort of body movement that was groundless and treacherous. Step by step, with hesitation, each word find their footing. Struggling to uh, strain through the distilled conversations and shuffling of feet and the nervous cough of, of occasional broken gathering over the that which is said and palpable. Think that thick silence averted. Then quickly, 
glances with unease as the body is shifting with discomfort and twisted through the very air of darkness that becomes awkward within the zone of comfort that filled the room with a high level buzz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's enough for one gathering. We're going to be here tomorrow. Wait, I think we have, an, we have one more. Is it there? Um, uh, yes. Uh, um, yes, that's what another thing that, that as the final as the final notes of our conversation fade into the distance, I bid you farewell. May your journey be painted with the vibrant hues of uh, discovery and wonder and may the echoes of our words find a place in the symphony of your thoughts until our paths cross again in the tapestry of time adios okay adieu <laughs> uh we're gonna be here tomorrow as much as we were here yesterday and as much as we're here this morning may 31st year 2024 friday morning here with the Hello Hello Show, and my name is Chaim Mizrahi, continuing with the tradition of public access and the Hello Hello Show. We love you. We know we're out there. And we wish you a wonderful weekend. Be patient, tolerant, understanding. Enjoy your time. This is the time to enjoy your time in this wonderful neck of the woods. And uh, we root for you, and we thank you very much. Wonderful. Take care.